From Lynn uh, County, Iowa, The Patch Project. It will be presented by Mark Beatty and John Brandt. Mark and I are honored to be here this morning to talk about the Lynn County Decategorization Project. Mark is with the state government, the area administrator for the Iowa Department of Human Services, and I'm with Lynn County Human Resources Management. So it is an example of a state and county uh, cooperative project. Decategorization is a unique initiative in Iowa in that it creates a child welfare fund. And as the name decategorization implies, it is an attempt to move away from categorical funding sources to create a child welfare fund that can provide funding and make services more tailored to the needs of the families and to be more responsive. The participating members in the decategorization initiative statewide are the Department of Human Services, the court system, and county government. In Cedar Rapids, we have expanded it to include the United Way. As you look at decategorization, it is a funding concept. As we implemented decategorization in Lynn County, we wanted to focus on prevention, early intervention, and diversion. We wanted to change service delivery and, and practice. So we linked with the University of Iowa School of Social Work. They were involved with a transfer of technology project from the United Kingdom called the Patch Project. And Patch in the United Kingdom means neighborhood. But it's not just a geographic area. It's neighborhood involvement. It's strengths. It's weaknesses. It's informal networks. And it's to target services into an area of greatest need. Another part of the Patch Project that came from the United Kingdom was the Patch Team. And in Cedar Rapids, we've looked at a, a network of 28 agencies that are part of our Family Resource Development Association. These organizations represent public and private organizations. They provide human services, health, and education, and we're hopeful we can include workforce development. The team meets with a family, assesses, assesses its strengths and weaknesses. We involve the informal resources. The families are an integral part. We integrate services. Rather than just having services co-located at a family resource center site, we tailor the services to the needs of the family, with the ultimate goal being family self-sufficiency. So the components of the Patch Project are flexible funding through decategorization, a neighborhood focus with strengths and, and weaknesses, and then the Patch Team, which is a partnership community social work services integration. Now, if you look at our project from four perspectives, beginning with novelty, Patch is unique in that it is neighborhood-based. Services are taken into the neighborhood. It is a developmental process. It responds to the needs of the neighborhood. It is not a cookie-cutter orientation. It's a linkage of public and private organizations that focus on health, human services, education, and we're hopeful workforce development. We incorporate the community as a resource, and the family is an integral part of the process. In terms of effectiveness, the federal grant that the University of Iowa School of Social Work had addressed the concept of building a team. This is sort of unique in human services, where you bring together staff from various agencies who are accustomed to provide their specific service, having them work together in a holistic approach. In addition to having them look at the broader needs of the services that they provide, it's also incorporating neighborhood involvement and family participation and focusing on strengths rather than deficits. The patch team process has been very successful, and we look to use this process as we focus on certain areas. We want to look at child abuse and neglect with a linkage with domestic violence. We want to focus on out-of-home placements. We want to look at income maintenance reapplications. We want to look at the number of referrals that remain informal and out of the child welfare system. And we want to focus on neighborhood and community participation, which again is somewhat unique in human services. We are data driven. We continue to work with the Iowa Department, I'm sorry, the University of Iowa School of Social Work. They assist us in developing indicators, data collection strategies, and analysis. We also use geomapping, which has been very helpful as we look at the neighborhoods where we can determine what are the strengths, what are the weaknesses. It gives us baseline data. We can look at our intervention. And then down the road, we can determine what our impact has been. In terms of significance, Iowa changed its legislative focus last year for child abuse neglect from an intervention strategy to an assessment strategy. Two of the assessors are linked with the patch team, so we integrate family support, family social work, services integration with child abuse neglect, and as I said, we want to link with domestic violence. The project has been involved in case studies with the Kennedy School of Government, the Center for the Study of Social Policy, and the American Humane Association. We are participating this, week in a, uh, this weekend in a televideo conference, the Clark of the Casey Foundation Family Resiliency Project. We also are one of the four demonstration sites for the Clark Foundation Family Partnerships for the Protection of Children. In terms of replication, this project started in the patch area in Brownstone, which is our area of greatest need. We look to replicate that in all of our sites, which would be four urban and one rural. 
As DCAT has gone statewide beyond just the urban counties in Iowa, community social work and patch has been an integral part of that transition. As we look at replicating this activity, we want to continue to work with the University of Iowa School of Social Work and the National Resource Center for Family Centered Practice. Our linkage with this organization has been very helpful and that it has assisted us in seeing the relationship between theory, practice, and research. If you look at what are the components for replication, you need a defined area, you need a neighborhood, you need a partnership between public and private, you need to link the services that exist, health, human services, education, and we want to include workforce development. You need to integrate services rather than just co-locate and have a seamless continuum. You need flexible funding, which decategorization has provided. Mm -hmm. Thank you. First question, Dot. Followed by David, followed by Jack. Uh, you mentioned in your application that the patch project had been uh, imported to both uh, your area and one in Pennsylvania, about which I don't really know anything. I'm aware that several other states have uh, recently taken steps in decentralization of child protective services programs. Um, both Kentucky and Florida, where I've lived recently, have done that. I don't, are you familiar enough with any of those programs to be able to, to define the differences between, and there may be other states as well. Our, well, Louisville, Kentucky, and Jacksonville, yes. Florida are, yes. are several of the sites the that were involved that, with Clark. Yes. Uh, Vermont, uh, in 94, we had a wing spread conference on patch. Uh, Vermont, from that time is this November, is moving forward with the, what they're calling the Vermont, uh, the Vermont Patch Conference. Uh, Duluth, Minnesota are, is looking at it. Colorado, we're making a presentation in October. Mm -hmm. the, um, whatever the differences are, I think the point we'd like to uplift is that it's not a cookie cutter approach. It enables the flexibility to tailor the response at the local level. Uh, we believe that we're probably more developed mm -hmm. in terms of integrating and bringing it to scale at the community level. You, you predated Louisville and Jacksonville, do you know? Or? In terms of it, what we're, our patch model, yes. yes. Okay. Yes. David? Uh, your presentation spoke to why it's more effective at the governmental level. Can you address why it's more effective at the family level? What results do you have? How effective has it been in terms of the families you're dealing with? Mm -hmm. Well, to begin with, what, what we'd like to uplift here is it brings families and neighborhoods back into the process of governing their own lives in very important parts of their lives, the safety of their children, uh, jobs, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, families have been interviewed. They're very supportive. Neighborhoods have been interviewed. They're very supportive. Uh, they started out very skeptical. Is there, in community policing, one often sees data that is attached to that. You can see crime rates. Do you have any analogous way to measure the effectiveness of the program in terms of the families you're dealing with? Uh, our first stage of evaluation was process, getting it on the ground and moving right. into it. Our right. second stage that we're trying to integrate with other initiatives in the community is to go exactly after those type of qualitative and quantitative assessments. And that assess those assessments are not in yet? No, no. It'd be anecdotal at this time. Jack, uh, followed by Dick. Oh, that was his question. Dick, and then Margot. Well, I, I think I, I have some of the same concerns. Uh, there are other programs that pull these resources together. Uh, and uh, in addition, uh, how do you really know whether the program is being effective or not? It, uh, uh, is there any objective way of knowing whether you're accomplishing anything with the program other than, as you indicate, uh, greater participation and involvement on the part, mm -hmm. uh, on the, part of the people? But, uh, how do you answer those criticisms? Uh, what's, what's different or unique about this? Mm -hmm. We believe what's unique about this is that we are trying to integrate an approach to answer those questions with third party evaluations. At this point in time, we don't know and it would be, we would misrepresent it if we told you that we, we knew. Uh, relative to our uh, Safe Children initiative, where it's like exploring the universe, trying to get this on the ground and identify benchmarks and, and move forth on it. To be, we call it beyond being anecdotal. Margo? Uh, my question has to do with how you decide or, or what the process is uh, in determining which neighborhood you'll go into, which kind of, uh, how you decide which services will be provided and by whom and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. uh, 
to, as we started out on this, we started top down at the community level. And what we're trying to do now is, as we replicate this and introduce the patch approach into other quadrants of the, the city, is to start with the families and the neighborhoods first and bring them into the process and have the dialogue. Can and I ask them what they want as you opposed bet. to? Bring them to the decision making table. Mm -hmm. They'd appreciate it much more. Yeah. Any last question? Not? Max, did you have a question? Would you just, talk, uh, to replicate this, the management of it is going to be very, very difficult. Uh, and would you just comment on the management aspect of it as you see the ability? I mean, if you're looking at it, then if you, you've got a hierarchy that works. Uh, but uh, what if you have to start delegating that to someone else? How, how is to, because it's a very complex thing yes, to make uh, work. Yes, it, starting out, we wound up not on many people's short dance card. Uh, it's, it is a difficult process. But what we find is, and again, if you invest in people, the jockeys, we, we have jockeys on the local level working on the, on the uh, interacting with the families. Uh, so we're trying to put some meat to the bone of empowerment 